All right. So last week, I really didn't follow the lesson too closely. I think it's a good lesson, um, but I'm going to try to go a similar route to last week. What I'm going to do, and I don't know if you've got a piece of paper out or you're typing on your laptop or something like that, but I've got 10 questions that I want to ask you about leisure. 10 questions. So if you need to get up and grab a pen, you know, you can grab it. But I think these will be good questions for, for us to ask individually. I think they're good questions for us as parents to ask our children, to ask them to think about if we're trying to encourage them to be spiritually minded and godly minded. Um, I think they're good questions to ask one another as uh, husband and wife in, in those relationships. And then, of course, they're good for us to talk to our, our brethren about. Um, sometimes we might see somebody who's using their free time and not a very positive, productive, and um, godly way. And we might have to talk to somebody about some of these things. And so with every question, there's going to be a passage that I want to encourage you to think about. And so that's kind of how we're going to do it. If I was to pick a key passage, I really, uh, I really like the, the passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Because when I read it, you know, I, I've always read that passage, especially verse 4. I've always read that thinking about, and, and this is a, a bad way to read scripture. Sometimes you're thinking about the other guy. You're thinking about somebody else. And, and you're not thinking about how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my life? And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says that in the last days, perilous times will come. And there's a very long list of things that will occur. Men will be lovers of themselves. And we mentioned that last week when we talked about selfishness. Men will be lovers of money. So we talked about greed. They're boasters. They're proud. They're blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty. Now, verse 4 says this, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And we live in a country that we really like our, our pleasure time. We like our free time. We like our leisure time. We, we like to use our toys. I was reading somewhere that, you know, men still like to play with their toys. They're just bigger and more expensive when you get older, um, right? So we still... <laughs> We still, uh, we still have to balance this idea of, you know, am I a lover of pleasure more so than a lover of God? And, and I have to think about that. You know, do I spend more time in my pursuits and my recreation and my pleasing myself and do things that make me happy than I do in serving the Lord? And so that's, a, I think, a key passage just to start. Second Timothy 3, 4, let's be careful we're not becoming so pursu uh, pursuing pleasure so strongly that it's fading out our zeal and our pursuit of God. Uh, but here's the 10 questions I've got. So I'm going to have to go a little quicker if we're going to get through all 10. Number one, number one, here's the first question. Are you sensitive to the fact that you and your family need leisure time? Are you sensitive to your family's need of leisure time and your personal need of that. So phrase that however you want, but I, I want to start out with that question simply because I don't want this to be a, a lesson that turns into bashing people who go on vacation or, or who, who take a day off or absolutely not. And in, in our lesson actually starts out with that, that even Jesus knew he needed time to take a break from things. And his disciples did. And so he was sensitive to that. In Mark 6, that's one of the passages that's mentioned here, verses 30 through 32, we read about that. And I'm going to read from the English Standard Version because it actually uses the term leisure. So we'll start with that one. But Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. So verse 30 says this. I'm getting there. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. So they're very busy working in the kingdom. 
they're teaching, they're doing things, they're helping people. And Jesus said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. He says, for many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. So the disciples are extremely busy. And we can go through seasons like that where our work has kept us extremely consumed. Um, sometimes we're working not just at work, but then we're, we've got projects we're working on at the house. And uh, we can just get worn out. We can get tired. And Jesus got tired. His disciples got tired. And so it says they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves because they didn't even have leisure time to eat. So are you sensitive to the fact that you need some leisure time every once in a while? Sometimes you got to stop the appointments and say, I got to have some time to eat. Got to have a little me time. Um, or you need a, that Saturday off or you need that spring break. Uh, you need that summer vacation so that you can sharpen the ax. Now, anybody know where that phrase, sharpen the axe, comes from in Scripture? Anybody know that passage? There's actually a, it's, it's actually a passage in Ecclesiastes. Look at Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 10. And it says this, in Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 10, if the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but wisdom helps one to succeed. Other versions will say ax, not iron, but an ax is made out of iron, so some versions say ax. So if the ax is blunt, if the ax is dull, and you don't sharpen it, you're gonna have to use even more strength. Anybody ever tried to saw off a limb with a dull blade? You have to work a lot harder when you have a dull blade, right? And sometimes you gotta take the sharpener out and you've gotta sharpen the blade so that when you're cutting on the limb, you, you can do the job a lot quicker. And sometimes when we don't take a break, when there's no time for leisure, when we feel in burnout, we, it's like we're going through our job, we're going through our work, we're, we're, we're trying to do it with a dull blade. And, but sometimes we just don't work as productively and as successfully as we used to. One of, the, one of the neat things I think happens today is there's a lot of actual jobs where they're giving people not just days to go to the doctor or go to the dentist, but they're giving them mental health days. There's employers recognizing that sometimes you just need a day off for your own mental health. You just need a, a day to rest. It's nice to package a few of those into your, into your schedule if you can. Zip's raising his eyebrows like, what? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, sometimes you need that. So that's question number one. Yeah. And the chat box is open if you want to jump in. And if you want to just interrupt me, just do it. Just jump in and interrupt me because I'll stop talking when I hear you talking. I, did I see? Hey, Josh. Phil? Yeah. There was an old saying at work all the time. Work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So. Phil, you were looking like you were jumping in there for a minute. I was going to say, aren't that, isn't, aren't that what, isn't that what the weekend days are for? Is that get that rest and relaxation? <laughs> Not for me. I know that. I work Sundays. So. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, your weekend might be Tuesday, Wednesday. Mine used to be that sometime years ago. My weekend right. was Tuesday, Wednesday, stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's, uh, that's good. It, it, there's a lot of people don't have days off, you know, they work seven days a week. Um, so it depends on your schedule. Not everybody's got those bankers hours, nine to five, Monday through Friday anymore. Right. So we need to be cognizant of facts. Sometimes you need a, some time off. Um, maybe that's just a half day. I don't know. But, and your family needs some time off with you as well. Jesus got away with his disciples. All right. Question number two, question number two, will my leisure time, conflict with my responsibilities to God and to the church. So will my leisure time conflict with my responsibilities to God and the local church? So Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So yes, we need leisure time, but let's also realize that we, we have responsibilities to God that are need to be performed on a consistent basis. Now, let me give you a couple of things that I'm thinking about there. Okay. On the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. It doesn't matter to me with my family, whether we're on vacation or not on the Lord's day, we're going to be worshiping somewhere. Um, because coming together on the first day of the week is a responsibility of mine, whether I'm on vacation or not. There's no vacation from that, from remembering my Lord on the first day of the week. And so that's something that you do um, when you're on vacation, when you're gone. You're making sure that you're making time for the Lord on the first day of the week to remember him, worship with, with the saints. And there might be some other things that uh, we should think about when it comes to Avoiding conflicts. Okay, I'm going to throw another one out there for you. At, now, this year's been weird, okay, because of COVID, gospel meetings have been moved around and changed and, and all that. Um, and so it's been a little bit of a weird year. I have four meetings scheduled this year, and they're all canceled now. They're all done. So, um I do have one actually Sunday night through Tuesday I'm, I'm doing here in Columbus, but all my scheduled meetings for the year are done. All right. So it's been a, a weird year, but at the beginning of the year, we hand out that little calendar magnet, right? It's got the gospel meetings. It's got the VBS. It's got the gospel meetings. Why do we do that? Hopefully so that people can schedule around the works that this church has organized so that we can get the gospel out to other people and so that you can be edified. Um, and so we, we, we hand out that magnet so that hopefully you can work your, your vacation schedule if you can around that. Um, and so that might be something, you know, if we put a special work together as a local church where we say we're going to reach out to our, our young people during the VBS or we're going to have a gospel meeting where you can reach out to your friends, maybe look at that schedule and see what you can do to work around that schedule so that your responsibilities as a local church are also taken a priority over our own leisure time and free time. Does that make sense? So, all right. Um, third question. Third question. Will whatever I do in my leisure, will it cause others to stumble? Will it cause other people to stumble? I don't know if you realize this, but there are people who sometimes do things in their leisure time that aren't very good. Can we think of anything? You guys got anything you'd throw out there that maybe is not a good use of your free time? Watch a bunch of TV. Okay, yeah. Sometimes we can uh, watch a bunch of TV. Um, I got a Carico. It says Nick Carico. Is, is that actually Zip or says, I work for the government, okay? Um, and uh, well, what's the context of that, Zip? I'm trying to, trying to connect that. <laughs> Basically, what that was, was when you were talking before about the, the time off, when I had that look on my face, like, are you serious? The mental health time, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got they give us they give us time off, but that was that's what that was all about. That's all. Okay, good. Um, the Campbells put in here sport, sports on Wednesday nights, Rebecca. So Wednesday night, you know, we've got a, a Bible study that it'd be great if we could all be there for that Bible study. And so, um, if there's a way that we can avoid being involved in in sports, so that other people see the importance of being there for Bible study. That's certainly a, a good example to set. Otherwise, when people see you playing your sport on a certain night, they think, well, I, I guess I can skip for practice or sports or whatever it might be. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a whole other – one thing I would say is one thing that you should really, really try to do that I've always tried to do with every coach of my kids is I try to tell them at the very beginning of the season – we're going to have a conflict on Wednesdays. So if there is any way that you can schedule around this conflict, 
that would really be helpful to me. And I've found a lot of, some coaches don't care, but I've found a lot of coaches are appreciative that you tell them before the season begins and before the schedule is handled out what the conflict is so they can work around it. But you're right. One of the reasons we have that conversation is to try to avoid being a stumbling block in those situations. All right. Tom says, as another person who works for the government, I assumed he meant he couldn't do the work smarter, not harder. part. <laughs> okay. All right. So Michelle Rep says, I used to always think about things that replace our meeting times in previous seasons of life, but now I think about what will take so much of my time that I love and is healthy, but wears me out to where I don't find ways to serve. All right, good thoughts there, good thoughts there. Let's make sure that we're using our free time to do productive things that are good um, and not use our leisure time to where it gets in the way. Yeah, go ahead, somebody said. Uh, that what makes it hard is if you got two uh, people that go to the same same congregation, and you got two kids playing the same ball games. Yours comes out, the other one stays, and you got to explain that to your, your I, kid. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a great example, Art. Um, you're right. Um, it. It creates an inconsistency sometimes in our in our kids' minds, and we end up having to explain it. Be just be nice if we could all try to be on the same page when it comes to to that sort of thing. Steve Seplo says, "Going out to drink or going to a friend or coworkers to drink." There you go, Steve. Um, some people they get done with work and they want to go have some drinks during happy hour and you're right or if you're sitting there around people who are all drinking alcohol you're going to be a stumbling block to other people that might be something that we want to think about um robert says getting too involved like a sports team is playing for a championship it distracts an avid fan's mind during services okay all right so even if you're not playing the sport um <laughs> but but your team is playing uh during perhaps an assembly time and your your focus is on that you're checking your phone to see you know what's what's the score right now um gary kerr i don't know if anybody knows gary kerr around here but gary preached down in bowling green for a long time he's an elder down there now and um he grew up in kokomo too but he tells a story um about when he was a teenager uh, they were big Cubs fans, and I think the Cubs were playing in the playoffs at one point when he was a teenager, and he had his headphones in, but he had, you know, the cord went down through his shirt. This is before AirPods, right? Um, the cord went down through his shirt, and he was listening to the game, and the preacher could tell he wasn't paying attention. The preacher just looked at him and said, what's, what's the score of the game, Gary? <laughs> because he knew he wasn't listening to the sermon. Uh, and you're right, Robert, sometimes we can be so involved in sports that it's like you can't give an hour to focus on the worship and the praise of God and, and his word. Uh, we got to break free from that sometimes. Maybe we've got a, an overemphasis on those things and we can be a stumbling block to others. So the passages I had there, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 32 and 33, I said with every question is going to have a passage with it. So the passage I have here is 1 Corinthians 10 verses 32 and 33. So verse 32 says, give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. And so let's make sure that we're doing things and making decisions that are gonna be profitable to others and don't discourage people's faith or commitment, but encourage their faith and their commitment. All right, so fourth question, we're on number four now. Any, any more thoughts or comments? Oh, Seth put something in here from Jeremiah, Jim, Jeremiah Ross. Dorothy still has no symptoms. She's supposed to be retested tomorrow, so that's good news for Dorothy. All right, number four. Will my leisure time activities bring reproach on the church? Okay. Will my leisure time activities bring reproach on the church? 
So for this one, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5, which that's a passage that is noted in your, your lesson for tonight in our book. But in verse 11, he talks about the younger women who were widows. And he says of them in verse 11, he says, refuse the younger widows. And so the younger widows weren't supposed to be part of the, um, they weren't supposed to be, money was not supposed to be distributed to them because Paul actually expected them to try to go back to work if they were young enough to do so. What chapter are you in? Uh uh, sorry, First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 11. First Timothy 5, 11. He says, Refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. But notice verse 13 is what I want, want you to really see. Besides that, they learn to be idle. Okay, so some of these women are younger women, maybe... Obviously, if they're widows, they don't have a husband anymore, so they don't have a responsibilities there. That frees up some time. Perhaps they don't even have children. I don't know. But he says they've got a lot of free time. And so with their free time, they're idle, and they're wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. And so they were using their free time to stir things up to be gossips, backbiters, busybodies, just nosing around in other people's business. And he says, I desire that these younger women, that they would get married and bear children and manage the house, spend more of their time on family, I think is what he's trying to say here, and give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So when you develop a reputation for being idle, lazy, using your free time just to go around and gossip with people and be a busybody, it hurts your reputation and it can hurt the church's reputation. Now, let me say something about that. They didn't have telephones back then. They didn't have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff back then. So if you needed to do, if you were doing some gossiping and nosing around in people's business, a lot of times you did it by going to someone's physical house to do so. We can do all that through social media now. Isn't it great? We can get in fights on social media. We can get in arguments with people. We can talk about people that have made us mad with their comments. We can do everything these women were doing all through the comfort of our own home. And so that needs to be something that we think about when it comes to how are we using our free time. Um, are, is someone going to be turned away from us as a Christian or, or even from our church by some of the things that we might be saying or standing for um, when we speak to other people? We need to be careful about that because you don't have to necessarily go to somebody's house to do that. You know, back 50 years ago, the illustration was that, you know, there'd be women getting on the telephone and just gossiping about people. All right. So we're, we're moving this First Timothy 5 into the, you know, 2020. All right, because this is how it works in 2020. So we can look at other passages. First Peter 4 says, you know, that uh, let no one suffer as a murderer or a thief or a reviler. Um, in, in other words, you deserve to suffer if you've done those things. But as a Christian, let's not bring reproach upon the name of Christ by being involved in sinful things. And so will my leisure time activities bring reproach on the church? You know, there might even be some concerts that you could go to. And when somebody knows you've been at that concert, you've been listening to that rapper who's cussing in every single song or that comedian who uses filthy language throughout his entire skit or someone's, you've been, you know, headbanging at that metal concert where guys are in the mosh pit and they're, they're bleeding and cutting themselves and they're making a joke out of death and hell and all their, you know, listen to some of this stuff. Is that really something? that's going to bring honor to the cause of Christ, or will your presence there bring reproach on the church? Maybe some things to think about when it comes to our leisure time. All right. Uh, sure. Um, you were talking about how things have changed over the years between about how we do that these days. So it's not just today where people may see you, but you were talking about social media, the things that you decide to put on that, are your likes or your favorites or that 
um, that that you're approving of, um, that's going to send a message as well about your leisure time and how you spend your time. Maybe you don't spend a lot of time in it, but if you associate your name with it and let other people know that that's something you approve of, um, that's a way that that can happen as well. It's a good point. That's a good point. Um, people look at what you like. Are you liking things uh, that are that are positive? I, I mean, I've seen Christians talk about going to see the Fifty Shades of Grey movie, or you know, just movies like that. And I'm thinking, why? Why are we telling people about? Why are we going to that first of all? But then, why are we advertising this? Like this is a good thing. This is not good. Um, and it's it's embarrassing to me as a fellow Christian. It's embarrassing when your brothers and sisters are advertising for what I think are very sinful, you know, movies and, and, um, uh, sometimes it's books, sometimes it's songs, um, but, or TV shows. Those are things to think about. All right. Fifth thing, fifth question. Can I afford my leisure habits? Can I afford my leisure habits? Okay. So Luke 14 talks about counting the costs. And I realized that the ultimate point of Jesus there is spiritual, but there's certainly a physical principle behind what he's talking about there. And that is nobody goes and builds a tower and then gets it half built and can't build the rest of it. You need to make sure you can afford it before you build it. And we need to think about that when it comes to leisure. You know, you, you can think to yourself, well, I deserve a vacation. And so I'm taking the kids to Disney. Well, if you take the kids to Disney every other year and you spend three, four, five thousand bucks on that trip and you've got credit card debt racked up so high, are you going to end up actually being more miserable in the future than you were before you left? Because you're going to have to work so hard paying off that debt uh, that you're going to be even more tired in the future because of that you become a slave to the lender. And Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7 says that the borrower becomes slave to the lender. And so, sure, it'd be great if we could all play golf every single day, but golf's an expensive game. Can you afford that? Are you going to put your family in debt doing that? Um, for some people, it's sinful things, but people that smoke, people that drink, those are expensive habits. And those, some of those people that are smoking or drinking or gambling, they're putting their families in debt because of their habits. They're putting their soul at risk, but they're putting their entire family in debt sometimes because of what they want to do in their free time. So make sure you can afford it before you do it. We can't always afford things and we can't look at, you know, what, you know, brother or sister so-and-so can't afford and, and compare ourselves to that. Your budget is, might be different than their budget. So don't shoot yourself in the foot by overspending and uh, make sure you can afford it. All right. Question number six. Uh, Tom says this, let me make sure I get his comment in here. Uh, people may also form an opinion about you based on how much time or money you spend on leisure. People are going to use your leisure activities and how much you sacrifice to do those things as a proxy for your priorities. That's a, that's a great point, Thomas, and bonus points for getting the word proxy in there too. Um, but yeah, nice. The Neville said, another thing with social media is that our actions can be forever recorded and thrown back at us. So that's a good point, Neville family. Um, to think about. Uh, all it takes is somebody screenshotting that, and even if we delete it later, it still might be recorded and still, still could be used against you. Okay, number six. Does my leisure time put me around bad company? So high school kids, you wanna, you know, you've been going to school five days of the week. You're, you're tired. Some of you are working a job after school. Some of you have practice after school. You've got band or sports or whatever it is. And so on a Friday night, you want to go out. You want to go be with your friends and just kind of get away from school and get away from work and get away from sports. But when you go to spend time with those friends, is are those friends going to be people who are going to be good companions for you, positive influences, or are they going to be bad companions? And the passage we're going to use is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Evil companions corrupt good morals. 
And that's not just true of kids in school. You know, you need to make sure that you're choosing good friends. And when you spend free time with someone, that they're going to be people who are good influences, hopefully on you, but true for adults. You know, there's a lot of girls who want to go have a girl's night out and want to drink. There's a lot of guys who want to go, you know, play poker and smoke cigars around a poker table while they, while they drink down at the, the wet bar in their basement. I mean, this, this doesn't matter if you're young or old or male or female, you can put yourself in your free time around bad influences. And so is, are these influences going to be a negative influence on you? Or are you putting yourself around positive influences? Hey, yes, sir. Hey, Keith, how you doing? I didn't know you were on here. Good Hi, to see you. Yeah, it says Susan, but I'm actually Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> hey, um, I can still hear you. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Oh, you're fine. Hey, talking about you know, you know, being influenced by others. Last year, talking about golf, I joined the golf with with an other Christian friend of mine. I'd never been a part of it before. And can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, hard to hear for some of us. Okay. You know, my friend, um, my about a Christian friend, and the problem that I had was is that I didn't know what I was getting into, and I, I put myself in a situation that put me around people that did smoke and did cuss and and did a variety of other things that were non-Christian activities. And um, I assessed that over the winter and, and I thought about, you know, how I was kind of like, I wasn't acting that way, but I was, I was almost condoning it by being there. So what I did was, is I decided this year to, to not go out for that golf league and try to go a different route. So, so yeah, you can easily get trapped into something like that. And if, you know, sometimes it's hard to get away from it because if you're if you're in it with a fr other Christian friend, you know, you, and you tell them that you don't want to be a part of it anymore, then that's almost kind of like an indictment on them. That's all yeah. I'll say. But yeah, and that's that's a that's a great point, and that's that's kind of what these questions are for. They're to help us grow in discernment and and wisdom and. You know, those situations, a lot of these situations we're talking about could be kind of tricky, some of them, and um, need to be careful about how we, how we handle that. And if, we, if it's bad for us and we feel like maybe this isn't very good for my friend either, maybe for his sake, I need to separate myself from this group of people. And maybe you're, you're doing the right thing there, and uh, maybe he'll make the same choice that you're making. So uh, Zip says here, guilt by association. So... Sometimes you're right. Sometimes people can um, accuse us of being a certain way because of who we're around. That's possible. Mary Beth says even some family members can be bad company. You're, you're absolutely right there. Yeah, sometimes it's even family who's the bad influence on us. And so maybe we shouldn't spend some of our leisure time with our family if they're going to be negative influences. They're not going to be good spiritual influences. So good point. And then um, this, I'm going to assume this is Zip here. Most folks don't need evidence. Uh, innuendo and supposition works fine. So interesting, interesting thoughts. Sometimes, um, that's right. Okay. So um, seventh question. Seventh question. I'm running out of fingers. Seven. Seventh question. Are my free time activities, are they cultivating the fruit of the spirit or the works of the flesh. So are my free time activities cultivating the fruit of the spirit or the works of the flesh? Now, I want you to think about this, and we've kind of mentioned this already, but the movies that you watch, the YouTube videos that you download, the TikTok videos, if you're on TikTok, that you're watching, 
the books that you choose to read in your free time. And for a lot of people, they just like to read in their free time. But there's a lot of books out there that aren't very spiritually beneficial for us. Uh, the music that you listen to. Sometimes you just want to get away and just listen to music. But is this spiritually edifying music? Is this good for your soul? Are some of the themes of those songs that you're listening to, are, are they themes that emphasize the fruit of the spirit or the works of the flesh? I um, think I've told you guys, I, I'm the announcer for Zoe's soccer team for their, uh, for their home games. And I was looking up songs yesterday because I'm supposed to play songs, okay? Uh, in between, you know, the pregame and the halftime and all that sort of thing. So I looked up, I was looking up, you know, the top 20 songs, hoping, you know, there's, there's maybe something that I could play there that the kids like, because apparently they don't like my music. Um, and <laughs> I think there is about 17 out of 20 of the most popular songs in the U.S. that all have explicit lyrics. Only three without explicit lyrics out of 20. That's crazy to me. So if your kids are popping in the headphones and listening to what's on the radio or what's popular now, there's a good chance it's not good. And, and I'm talking to the teenagers, you know, here and parents of teenagers and even the younger crowd. We've got to be careful what we're putting into our ears because it's going into our heart and it affects our hearts and our, and our souls. And so Galatians 5 would be the passage I'd look at. I'm not going to read it because I think most of you know what Galatians 5, 19 through 23 is about. It's about the works of the flesh, and it lists what those are. And then it lists what the fruit of the Spirit is. Um, our minds, our meditation, and leisure time is a time to get away and to meditate and to think. But Philippians 4.8 says that we should be meditating on things that are pure and lovely and true and of good report to think on these things. Uh, I know a lot of people who have gotten off social media because they're they're tired of seeing political negativity. They're tired of fights. They're tired of seeing wars. They're, and it's mentally affecting them. They, they feel like it's spiritually affecting them. And so they've, they've cut it out because there's, there's too much negativity. And if that's what you have to do in order to more spiritually thrive and to live a more spiritually productive daily life, sometimes that's what we need to do. Cut out that which is being a, having a negative impact on us. And um, that's what some people have done. So Philippians 4 verse 8 uh, says meditate on good things. I mean, if what you're seeing all the time is bad stuff, then sometimes it's good just to get it out of your face. All right, we've got three more questions. Three more questions. This one I'm going to go through quickly. Is it destructive to your body? Is it destructive to your body? Okay, if what you do in your free time is drugs, alcohol, smoking, I, I talked to a preacher friend of mine. He was telling me about a church. This is down south, far from here, but he, but he said, he said they're having a big time, but they're having a hard time because there's a lot of teenagers there that are smoking pot, smoking weed together. That's what they're doing in their free time. He said it's a big issue. It's, it's embarrassing to their parents. They're Parents don't know, you know, when they, every time they get out of the house, that's what they're doing. No. Is it destructive to your body? Smoking, drinking, drugs. Um, we could also talk about sexual morality. 1 Corinthians 3 indicates can be destructive to your body as well, because there are such a thing as sexually transmitted diseases to think about. Okay, two more questions. Does it violate or disrespect my parents' wishes or my spouse's wishes? Ephesians 6 says, children, obey your parents. If you're doing something that you know your parents would not approve of, and they wouldn't approve of it because they know that this isn't a godly or right thing to do, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And so is it violating your parents' wishes? Is it disrespecting your parents? What you're watching, what you're listening to, who you're going with, where you're going, what you're doing, when you go there. Is it violating your spouse's wishes? Because sometimes we can do things that we know wife 
doesn't approve of or our husband wouldn't approve of us talking like this or acting like this or if you found out what we were saying we're supposed to submit to one another there's there's that that has to take place and we're supposed to listen to one another in a marriage and so you know maybe you've got a friend I, i've known christians who are in this situation i've known guys that were in a situation you got a friend and your wife thinks that this friend is a bad influence on you Every time you hang around him, he doesn't talk clean. He tells dirty jokes. She knows she she knows he's no good for you. And she's told you, I don't think he's a good guy. I think you should stay away from him. Listen to your wife sometimes. She might be right. And vice versa. Maybe your husband tells you that person that you hang out with, she gossips all the time. She's always talking bad about somebody. She's always backbiting. Maybe you don't need to talk to him. Maybe that's not the type of person you want to be around because they're going to think you're a gossip. So maybe we either need to address the problem and, and correct that with other people, or maybe we need to respect our spouse's wishes and be careful who we're around. Josh? Yes. You know, actually, we all ought to be kind of intelligent enough not to be around that type of people to begin with. That's true. Sometimes we're not. My wife would be glad to tell you. Sometimes, sometimes we're not. <laughs> I mean, as a Christian, we ought to be making the proper decisions that, you know, this, this individual is not a good person to be around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we need each other. So I need parents to tell us that sometimes to, to say, look, I've, I've seen how this person acts, and I'm not sure that this is a person that's going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see you influencing them. You know, it's, it's one thing we're trying to influence people, but sometimes they're having the influence and the power over us. All right. Last question. All right. You can probably guess what this one is. What would Jesus do? Okay. That's our, that's our last question. Would Jesus do with his free time what you're doing with yours? First Peter 2, 21 says that we've been called to follow in his steps. So we're trying to be more like Jesus. And so um, just got to be careful about what we're doing, what we're saying, who we're around, and um, being careful of our influence, making sure that God only gives us so many hours in every day, so many, so many days in our life, and we need to use them for his glory. And even in our free time, let's make sure that we're not doing anything that's going to spiritually draw us further away from God. We're still trying to draw close to him. Uh, all right so let's let's just end with the final question and get you guys involved um brandon brandon said maybe we only needed that one question all right thanks brandon that's probably true so last question let's let's just end with some pot what are some good ways for christians to use their free time because i feel like we've talked about a lot of things you should avoid what are some is there anything we can do in our free time what are some good ways that, that Christians can use their free time, your leisure time, for good. Make a phone call, but don't gossip, and just say, "Have a good day. Want to talk to you. Hope you're doing well." Okay, good, good. Um, make a phone call. Just check on somebody who needs. Go check visit. On. Go, go visit them. Yeah, go visit them. That's. There's a lot of people like that. A lot, a lot of people who need that. I think I heard Bonnie say there. Uh, Thomas said in the group chat. Donna Baker, uh, she she gets lonely. And she didn't really enjoy a phone call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the and, elder people. You know, and you can get on the phone with somebody like Donna, and she'll tell you a good story, and she'll actually end up cheering you up. <laughs> Sometimes that's just refreshing. You're checking on them, and they end up encouraging you. Right. because they're so happy you called. Susan says, send cards of encouragement. Um, Thomas had said, volunteer at a local animal shelter. So there's a, if you're an animal person, that's a good one. The Campbell said, take a nap. Um, hey, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just need some rest. That's true. Uh, help out other people is what Zippy said. So good. Um, Brandon said, hang out with other Christians. Good. Spend some time with some other Christians. Go get some coffee with somebody. Um, go take a hike with somebody out of the park. Go spend some time with them. Have them over for dinner. Steve said, go for a walk. 
enjoy God's creation. I like it, Steve. Sometimes just get out and you need to breathe some of that fresh air and enjoy God's creation. Spend time in prayer. Talk to God while enjoying the outdoors. That's, that's good, Steve. Um, Hattie said, read your Bible or before school starts, get together with someone for a one-on-one -on -one Bible study. Help someone's soul. Good job, Hattie. All right. I like it. Uh, Eister said, meditation with the Headspace app has helped me with praying and general anxieties. I have to check that one out. I don't, I don't think I have the Headspace app, so I'm going to have to check that one out. Um, that's good. Sometimes you just need some time to just clear your mind. Um, and, and think about, think about some time with God. Fellowship with other Christians, Seth said, uh, John has said, work out with Christian friends. Uh, I know, I know John has done that quite a bit, so that's good. Yeah, that's, that's her mental health break, I think. So, um, that can be good too. Anything else you guys would add to that? Those are some good ones. Hey, it could go water skiing, Josh. Oh, Art. Art Art was in my Sunday night class, so he heard my water skiing illustration. So that's right. You could go water skiing if you were good at water skiing, So, but I'm not. So um, not trying that again. Uh, Emily said, send scriptures that are uh, uplifting via text or email. That's a great one. That's a great one, Emily. Just send somebody a, a Bible passage that's an encouraging passage just to um, help uplift them. That's a great one. Robert said, we should respect individual liberties on some level. That's right. That's why I ask questions because I'm careful, you know, not to lay down the law, maybe in a different way than you lay the law down when it comes to wisdom and discretion. But I think there's some questions that we can ask that will help us make better, wiser decisions. So good. Um, Robert said, what one would define leisure may not feel that way at all to someone else. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, I had a friend, uh, we were talking this week, he's down in Arkansas. He was actually telling me that they canceled my meeting. And, and so that's why we were talking. And I said, man, I am so ready for this year to be over. I'm just ready. Like, can we celebrate the new year and move on? Because it's just, it's felt like a really long year. I mean, normally I have gospel meetings and it helps me break up the year. I'm kind of tired. And, and uh, so he said, yeah, we should all go camping. And I said, that doesn't sound like fun to me. I don't like to go camping. That sounds like work. I mean, building a fire, uh, having to bring, I don't, so you can go camping if that's what you need to get away, but that's not my getaway thing. Um, but some people, you're right. You're right, Robert. Not everybody enjoys leisure the same way. Uh, Sarah says, start a prayer group. Leslie said, quilting, crafting, knit a prayer shawl. So those are some great ideas too. If you're and, and, and I like how we're getting some different ideas in here based upon what your interests are and what, what, you, uh, what you enjoy. If you're a crafty type person, a hands-on type person, you like to do things like that with your free time, great things as well. Josh, hey, you're Josh. talking about camping. It's not the tent and sleeping bag anymore. It's a nice big trailer with a stove and everything else. And that's <laughs> camping today. Right, right. Okay. Uh, Carissa said, be creative about serving. Being busy isn't a bad thing. Um, you're right. We can sometimes be busy and doing things that are enjoyable. Um, Elaine said, no one said eating. Exactly, Elaine. That's true. That's my leisure time. I'm with you there. Um, yeah. Go drink a sh milkshake with somebody. Uh, grab some coffee. I even saw Ben drinking his, his to-go coffee today on, on social media. I got a kick out of that. Um, all right. Seth, you had popped in to say something. Well, you know, we've talked a lot about tonight, you know, some of the times when we maybe need to distance ourselves from friends that maybe aren't the best. And um, that fellowship with other Christians is, is definitely something I think I could do better at. And I, I've, I've thought a lot lately about the fact that we are spread out. We're in central Ohio, but we live so far apart, you know, where, where I grew up, most of the people were within four or five miles of each other that, mm -hmm. that we went to church together with. And yeah. um, it's difficult. It's difficult with our busy lives, you know, without COVID, um, for us all to hang out together and be friends together because, you know, how many miles separate us? Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know. I think maybe we could do, or I could do a little bit better about that and try to hang. I know you don't golf much, so maybe 
maybe we could go do something together. But. Pretty sure I'd slow your golf game down, Seth. So <laughs> putt, putt, I'll do that. Sounds fun. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys, good, good thoughts, good topics. I hope some of this was encouraging to you. And I, and I most importantly hope that some of these things we're going to put into practice and try to use our leisure and our free time in a way that's, that's positive and helpful. And maybe this has generated some thought that can help, help us draw together a little bit closer and develop good relationships with each other. And a uh, couple more comments before I get done talking. I've got Emily said self-care physically by exercise uh, or through exercising your mind, spirit, soul, through reflecting on self-improvement. Oh, and um, just jump down there. How to build our strengths toward work, to work toward eliminating our weaknesses. Good. Self-development's good. It's a good way to use your free time. Um, Thomas said, John, let's start a Christian eating club. Oh, boy. All right. Um, all right. So good stuff. That was Hannah, I think, that said that. Okay. You guys are having fun, so that's, that's good to see. All right. We're going to end with a prayer. 